Hello, my name is Dr. Carla Butan Foster. I'm a primary care physician and associate professor of medicine at SUNY Downstate Medical Center in Brooklyn, New York. Today I'm joined by Mr. Neil Berrison. Neil is a kidney transplant recipient and has experienced symptoms related to both gout and chronic kidney disease. Hi, Neil. Hi, how are you? Great, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So tell me, what has it been like for you having gout, chronic kidney disease, and now as a transplant recipient? Well, let me start with the end first. It, it is wonderful. I feel completely liberated and blessed to have received a living donor kidney transplant uh, a little more than a year ago. And according to the physicians and just how I feel, I'm doing very well. So I'm very grateful and thankful for that. And as my kidneys were failing, I developed some gout symptoms, uh, fairly typical, I'm told. I would have excruciating pain in my big toe, sometimes in other joints, but mostly my toe, to such an extent that you couldn't even put a sock on it, certainly not a shoe, and I couldn't even touch a sheet on top of it. It felt like a hot knife uh, going through my bone, and to relieve those symptoms, medication was prescribed, which helped me a great deal. At one point during the course of uh, the treatment, I had to stop using the first drug because it came into conflict with another medication that I was taking for an unrelated problem. We gave the medications a rest for a period, and then I went on a different regimen of medications, which I was able to continue to use as long as I had these symptoms. Now I'm free of gout with the transplant, and I have no symptoms Oh, that's excellent. At all. That's good to hear. Thank now, you. what medications are you currently on for gout, or what medications were you changed to? Okay, when I was first diagnosed with gout, I was on something called allopurinol, right. um, and that medication was a constant, I'll call it a background medication. For acute attacks, uh, where I got these flare-ups uh, that were very painful, uh, I would supplement that medication with Coltracine. And then was there a third medication that you were finally put on? Uh, yeah, at a later point in time, when the allopurinol was conflicting with another medication, I uh, was put on something called Febuxostat. Now tell me about your dietary changes because I believe there's some, medic some meals that you can't eat. Yes, uh, both with respect to gout and with respect to chronic kidney disease, there are foods that um, can aggravate the condition mm -hmm. and cause parallel problems. With the gout, uh, there's a class of foods called, that contain purines that was important to avoid. So purines are found in lots of meats and are found in seafood like lobster or shrimp. So uh, sort of the worst case scenario is, you know, having fun with friends uh, and having beer and a whole bucket of shrimp, and then the following morning feeling like you just don't want to be in your skin because you have such a painful attack. So it sounds like you've had to make some major changes in your dietary habits. I did, um, and that was also um, different kinds of changes in food nutritions uh, due to the chronic kidney disease. So as that was being managed, uh, they were constantly checking my electrolytes, my potassium, my phosphorus, my magnesium, and I would have to take away or supplement certain nutrients uh, to deal with that, and make sure that these optimum values were being maintained. So during the course of uh, management of gout and chronic kidney disease. There's frequently laboratory work done to check on the status of certain key values for chronic kidney disease. It's creatinine, and it's something called the glomular filtration rate that they are very interested in. And for gout, it's uric acid that they're checking. 
and monitoring levels. So you have to constantly monitor, and for some people, that means rather intensive um, concentration on dietary intake. Um, and usually there are uh, nutritionists who help aid patients in designing diets for their specific needs. And it's also a team effort. So mm -hmm. if you're not preparing the food yourself, you need to have someone in the household who helps you with that. So I've learned that with gout and chronic kidney disease, it's very important to have periodic laboratory work done to monitor certain things that are of importance to the physicians. Uh, can we talk about that, doctor? Uh, what are those important things and what do you tell your patients about that? It's a great question. As a primary care doctor, when I look at my patient's lab, the concern for me is the potassium. Is it too elevated or is it too low? And you're absolutely right. With a high potassium, you're at risk for cardiac arrhythmias and also with low potassium. I also look at um, calcium and phosphorus because in patients with kidney disease, they can combine deposit in the bones and cause very painful joint disease. And we also look at your hemoglobin to make sure that you don't develop anemia. So you're absolutely right. There's several labs that we look at and share with patients so they can monitor that in their diet also. And then when you come for dialysis, we also look at that. Now, you mentioned um, making a lot of changes and adjustments and adaptations in your life. Um, how has your family played a role in this? How have they been helpful to you? That's also a very good question, and, and I think it's a very important one for patients because what's the expression, it takes a village? I mm -hmm. believe it truly does with the management of a patient who has these diseases because what the patient alone cannot do it. So there needs to be a, a support system in place. It does take a team approach. It's the patient, their family member, and providers. So tell me, as a primary care provider taking care of patients with gout and kidney disease, what are some important things for us to know about you and how do we take care of our patients better? So I like that question a lot because I think there are things that the healthcare provider can do to help the patient be managed uh, better, both medically and psychologically, oh. because all of this uh, has psychological impact on the individual, on the family, uh, the dependents, and the like. Well, thank you. And I'd like to ask you, if you can share a few points with other patients who have gout and chronic kidney disease, what would you tell them? So I would tell them a few things. One is to try to maintain a positive outlook. Be hopeful. Um, and try to help your physician be the best physician that he or she can be. Uh, be accurate in what you're conveying to your physician. Be complete in what you're conveying to your physician. Uh, be open and not embarrassed about things that may be going on with your um, uh, bowel habits or your urinary habits or your sexual life, it's extremely important to be open about that because there are things that medications do that affect those things and there may be help that physicians can provide to you if they only knew you were having these problems. And Carla, lastly I would say uh, that patients should help themselves help you by uh, keeping a record, a written record yeah of major problems that they experience. If you've had pain from a, a gout flare-up, you should note when it started, where the pain is, how long it lasted. If you took medication that was prescribed for this problem, what did you take? When did you begin to feel relief? And if you haven't felt relief, that's extremely important to note for your physician. Well, thank you. That's very helpful. So the patient has to be an active participant. 
Would yeah, I believe so? the p physician and the patient are partners in this process, each dependent on the other to help yeah. achieve the best result possible. So I want to thank you, doctor, uh, for giving me the opportunity of speaking with you today and trying to uh, inform patients about the kinds of experiences I have uh, had uh, and my great hope and objective in doing this with you is to educate the public, educate the physician population to better perhaps understanding what patients go through and my best wishes to everyone for good health. Well, thank you, Neil. You raise a good point. It is important for providers to know that not every patient with gout has chronic kidney disease. And not every patient with chronic kidney disease experiences gout. But because they're often comorbid or occur together, it is important for both patients and their providers to be aware of the signs of symptoms of gout in patients with kidney disease. And for patients with kidney disease, it's important for providers to check for gout and hyperuricemia and to be aware of some of these symptoms. Well, thank you very much, Neil, for coming here and sharing your story on what it's like to live with both gout and chronic kidney disease. Thank you very much for joining me for this presentation. I wish you all good luck and good health.